Hello, and welcome to a special episode of the Sarah Seems Podcast. My name's Sarah, and I'm coming to you from Columbus, Ohio, where I live with my partner Troy and our cats Alex and Moo. This is my channel where I share all things crafty. It's a lot of knitting, a lot of sewing, some quilting sprinkled in here and there, and who knows what else in the future. But today I am coming to you with a new video in my sewing plans series. So every season, um, right around the solstice or the equinox is when I work on my sewing plans. And I come up with, I collect throughout the previous season. So like, for example, these are my summer sewing plans. So throughout spring, I started collecting inspiration and fabrics and pattern ideas for what I wanted to make in the summer. And I just kind of collect all those things. And then a few days before the solstice or sometimes even on the solstice, um, I will take my collected items and ideas out and I will sit down and figure out what I want to make. I'll look at my, what fabrics do I have? What patterns do I have? Uh, what inspiration do I have saved? Do I have any things in my closet that need to be reworked into something else? Um, and I have a few of those this time. And then I will sketch out everything I want to make and I put together a cork board, which I have here to show you, um, that hangs in my sewing room. So here, make sure the whole thing's in the frame. <laughs> here are my summer sewing plans. If you're interested in seeing more, uh, in more detail how I do this, how I put this together, I am also doing a summer vlog series right now and I shared the whole process in my most recent blog from uh, June 19th. Um, and I will also be sharing this on my Instagram with uh, all the designers and fabrics tagged. And you can find me on Instagram at Sarah underscore seams and on Ravelry at Sarah Ribble. I know that's more of a knitting thing, but just put it out there. Um, yeah, so this is my summer sewing plans. Uh, in this episode, I will talk a little bit about my process. Um, and then I will talk in depth about each of these plans and the fabric. I have all the fabrics here, um, sizes that the patterns are available in, where I got the fabrics, etc. Um, I do have notes over here, so if you see me looking over, that's what I'm looking at. And yeah, I'm just gonna jump right in. So I just talked a little bit about the seasonality of my plans, and I find that works well for me, having this cork board hanging right above my ironing board in my sewing room. It really helps to keep me motivated throughout the season. Um, I am a pretty quick sewist, so for me, it makes sense to make summer things in summer. Um, if you are, if it takes you a little bit longer to complete projects, you might want to consider planning a little bit ahead. Like maybe you do a mix of summer and fall sewing in summer or, you know, whatever works for you. This is what I found works for me. Um, I use a My Body Model croquis to draw my sketches on. And if you're interested in learning more about that, I'll link below to an article that I wrote for them um, about my sketching process and my planning process. Um, it's a really great tool if you are interested in doing some sketching like this because basically how it works is you put in your body measurements and it makes a customized figure based on your exact measurements. So you can sketch your garments on your body, which is amazing and helps to visualize that how things will actually look on you. So that's a great tool. Again, if you're interested, I'll link to that article below. I'm just gonna jump into the plans now. I do have quite a few this season. There's quite a bit to get through. So I will try to go through them fairly quickly. All right, so the first thing I'm planning to make, and I should say I'm gonna kind of go in order from smallest to largest. I'm gonna start with an accessory and work my way through tops, uh, bottoms, and then dresses. And I don't have any outerwear this season, so that's gonna be, we're gonna end with dresses. So the first thing I'm planning to make is the Sandhill Sling. This is a pattern by Noodlehead Designs, who uh, explicitly designs bags and their patterns are really beautiful. It is available in one size, but it does have multiple views and options. So I think in the photo, you can see that there's like a zipper front pocket and a button front pocket. There's like some different alterations that you can make. I, excuse me, I am gonna be making the uh, zip pocket option and I'm going to be using, 
I just have, I have it cut out already, so I just have a little piece here. I'm gonna be using uh, this really pretty brown canvas. It's 10 ounce organic cotton canvas. Uh, the color is teak and it is from Blackbird Fabrics. I actually purchased this fabric to make a set of port side bags for my partner Troy for Christmas last year. And I have a lot left over, like a lot. So I went ahead and cut out the sandhill sling and I still have a ton left over. I could make multiple more bags with what I have left over. Um, so yeah, this is a scrap busting project for me. And I actually had most of the notions I needed as well. I have a roll of zipper tape that I can cut to the size I need. I had leftover webbing straps from those port side bags. And I think the only thing I had to purchase was the hardware for the straps. So the like D-ring and the clasp, the hook. Um, and I ordered those from Noodlehead's website. They sell kits for all of their bags as well, which is awesome. Um, and everything I mentioned today, the patterns, uh, fabrics, if they're still available, uh, will all be linked below in the comments and, or I'm sorry, in the description box. And if I miss anything, please feel free to let me know in the comments. Um, so yeah, that is the first project is a Sandhill sling. I'm gonna start a pile of fabric here on the floor. <laughs> all right, the next one is a rework. So uh, probably over a year ago, I made this white Rowan bodysuit, which uh, is a pattern by Megan Nielsen. It's the crew neck long sleeve bodysuit, and it just is too small. Um, I made the recommended size based on my measurements, and the fabric has the correct amount of stretch, but it's just very tight, tighter than I want. The neckline kind of chokes me. Um, so I'm gonna, but the fabric is beautiful. It's this wide whale um, bamboo rib knit from Black Roof Fabrics. The color is ivory. So I'm gonna repurpose this into a Samar camisole, which is a new pattern from Paradise Patterns. It is available up to a 58 inch bust. And it's just this really cute little cropped camisole with a built-in bra. And I'm thinking I will have enough fabric here to make one of those, at least I'm hoping I will. If I have to make, oh, if I have to omit the um, built-in bra or make that out of a different uh, rib, you know, knit, that's, that's fine. I'll figure that out. But yeah, that is a rework. Really cute new pattern. Um, next is the top number one from 100 Acts of Sewing, which is a book, but I believe the pattern is a very similar pattern, not the same pattern is for sale as shirt number one, um, independently. And I'm going to be making a knit version in this French Terry. It's like really fluffy on the back. You can really see on the edge there. It's like quite a thick Terry. Um, it's Heather Gray. I picked this up at a local fabric swap a couple of weeks ago. And there's quite a bit here, definitely enough to make like a big oversized top. So this pattern is designed for wovens. My plan is to kind of size up and just make a big oversized version out of this knit because this isn't a knit that you want um, like negative ease with like you want it to be oversized because it's not going to have a ton of really good recovery um, so once it stretches out it kind of is going to bag out so I think something like that will be really nice for this as just like a big cozy piece that I can throw on at home this pattern is available up to a 56 inch bust Okay, and the next two items are kind of a hack of that pattern. So I've made a version of this before that has a peplum on the bottom. So it uh, comes to just my natural waist and then there's a peplum and I really like that um, top. I wear, I have a couple different versions. I wear them a lot. So, but the peplum kind of goes to my like upper, like mid hip, I guess. Like the peplum is a bit longer. So I wanna make a couple versions where the top is the same, but the peplum is cropped. So the top overall would be much more cropped. And the idea is to wear it with like a skirt or a pair of high-waisted pants. And um, I'm gonna be making this out of two woven fabrics. So the first one is this beautiful green uh, emerald linen. This is the washed linen from Blackbird Fabrics. And I actually have a skirt already in this color. 
and I have a hard time outfitting it. So I really just want a little matching top and I think that would be super cute. So that is gonna be the first one. And then I could wear that with other bottoms as well. And then the second one is this kind of heavier weight um, black linen rayon blend from Joanne Fabrics. And this is left over from my Zadie jumpsuit that I recently made, which I love. Um, I gushed all about it in a recent podcast episode, um, but there's plenty of fabric here to make a top as well. So this is another kind of scrap busting project. Next is the Anthea blouse by Anna Allen Clothing. Uh, this is one of my favorite top patterns. Unfortunately, it is not the most size inclusive. It's one of the first patterns that I purchased. Um, and since I already own it, I'm going to continue making it, but I would really like to see this designer expand their size range. It's only available up to a 48 inch bust. I would really love to see them go up to at least a 60 inch bust. And, you know, all we can do is call on them to do that. So since I had purchased the pattern years ago, um, like I said, I already own it, so I'm going to make another one, but I have not purchased any of their patterns since then, and I won't be purchasing any more of them until they expand their size range. Um, but I'm going to be making this blouse out of this denim. There is a massive amount of fabric here. I got this at the Fabric Swap as well, and I think it was a duvet cover, like a king size duvet cover. But it's this beautiful faded, um, non-stretch, lightweight denim, and there's so, so much of it here. Um, it's just beautifully worn in. It's super soft. There's no obvious like staining or any like flaws in it. Obviously there is variation in the color. As you can see, some parts are much darker than others. So I'll have to kind of pay attention to that when I'm cutting, but I am planning to make an Anthea blouse out of this because I think that I'll just be able to wear that with a ton of stuff in my closet. All right, next one is a perfect example of how these plans are not set in stone. So that's another point I like to make about this is that yes, I make these plans, but they're still very flexible. It's just aspirational. It's not like, you know, set in stone. So I just made these plans yesterday and I've already changed my mind about one of them. <laughs> so let me tell you what I was going to do and then let me tell you what I've decided to do instead and why. So I purchased this top from Maker and Mineral um, about a year and a half ago, maybe a little more. And because I'm obsessed with this like custom um, blog printed hand print that they do, um, and it's a beautiful top, but unfortunately it is just way too small. Um, I even, you know, I reached out to the designer about what size to order and it, I could barely even get it on over my head. Um, so that was, you know, that was a bummer, um, because it came from Australia and, you know, the designer did offer to exchange it for me, but, uh, I was going to have to pay the post and it had already been expensive. So... I just decided to hang on to it and repurpose it into something else, but it's just been sitting around and I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I had initially thought that I would combine it with this linen to make some kind of like top. So my initial plan was to make the March top by Helen's Closet, which has like multiple panels on the front. But the more I looked at it, the more I just thought like, these colors aren't exactly the same and I think it was gonna bother me. Like, I, I just don't know if that's the best way to like showcase this fabric. So I decided I'm not gonna use this fabric for this. I think I'm going to end up using this fabric to make like a pillow or a bag or something because the top's fairly small and if I have to cut it up even more to put it into a garment, I just think you're not gonna get credit for the print. So I'm gonna set this aside for another purpose and just make a top out of this gingham, which is another rework. So I had initially made this, this actually right here is my sewn up Chloe Bias skirt by Soften Studio. And I had a lot of issues with this pattern and it was too small. 
So I, I, again, I talked a lot about that in a recent podcast episode. I'm not going to go into all the details here, but if you're interested in hearing more about this pattern and my experience with it, please check out. Uh, it's one of the last two podcast episodes. So I have this whole skirt and it's quite reusable because it's just two, one front panel and one back panel. They are cut on the bias, but they're really large pieces of fabric. So I think I can squeeze some other pattern pieces out of those. And I had scraps from the project as well, quite a bit. Um, so I think what I've decided I'm gonna make instead of the March top is the Collage Gather Top by Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. I have not tried any of their patterns yet, but they are all very cute and very my style, like mixing and matching fabrics, gathering, easy wearing pieces. Um, and this top is available up to a 64 inch bust, which is awesome to see. And I, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to just use these fabrics, this fabric. I thought maybe it would be cute to cut the back, the gathered panels on the side, at, like on the bias or something like that. Um, but I also have a bunch of other linen scraps that I could like mix and match if I want more of a piecemeal look. So we'll see what I end up doing with that, but that is going to be the collage gather top. Uh, you'll see here today, there's a lot of gingham. <laughs> And I'm just really loving gingham and having a moment with it. And I'm sure I'm not alone, um, but there's like five different colors of gingham in my pile of fabric. So please let me know if I'm not alone. Are you also having a gingham phase? It just, I find it so easy to wear and I just really think it's delightful, but I don't know if there's, you know, how much is too much. I don't know. All right, next one are the Nini Kulats, which is in my top two of all time favorite patterns, probably my number one, you will see later, I alternate between them. But I've kind of hit this point in my sewing journey where I just know what I like. I know the patterns I like to sew. I know the patterns I like to wear and fabrics I like to wear them in. And I'm just making them in every color because <laughs> that is what I reach for every time I get dressed. And I don't know. I, I just want to be comfortable and like what I'm wearing and I don't really like see the point in like forcing myself to wear things that I don't love. So I have just started making many different colors and versions of the things that I do love. And the Nini Culottes is one of those things. This pattern can be used with knits or wovens and I have probably like five or six different versions of these already. Um, but they're just so comfortable and easy to wear. And so I'm gonna make another version. And I got this beautiful everyday linen from Blackbird Fabrics. The color is Merlot. And it's getting a little blown out on the screen. It's really um, like a really pretty burgundy like wine color. And these, um, I think these are just gonna be a really great, like probably more like late summer, fall um, in this color, but I just, I don't have enough of this color in my wardrobe because I really do love it. And I think these will be a really great stable piece, especially in the fall for me. So I'm very excited about those. The pattern is available up to a 46 and a half inch waist and a 56 hip, but that is unstretched. Um, and they do have a ton of ease and a fully elastic waistband. So I feel like there's some wiggle room there for larger sizes as well. Okay, this is a fun one. This is gonna be the Donovan skirt by Helen's Closet, which is another pattern I really like. I've made two of these and wear them a lot. Um, it's a great summer skirt because I like to make the longer length with the side slits. So it's very easy breezy. I really like the slash pockets. It's just a really easy wearing garment. And I'm gonna be making this, this game is insane. I'm gonna be making a version in this um, soft wash gingham from Helen's or from Blackbird Fabrics. It's 100% linen. The color is Juicy Fruit. And you can see it's this like really vibrant pink and orange. This is my year of trying to wear more color. And I've long thought that I was not a fan of orange, but I think what I've learned this year is that I just have to find the right shade of orange and this like, bright like more reddish orange is the one for me. I have a really cute um, sweatshirt in that color that I can't wait to wear with this in the fall 
and I have I think with just like a white t-shirt and a denim jacket this would be so cute in the summer so very excited to have this fun colorful skirt in my wardrobe this pattern is available up to a 52 inch waist and a 62 inch hip next one the next oh yep yeah, more gingham <laughs> okay so this is i just mentioned we would get to my all-time favorite pattern and here it is so this is the mave skirt by true bias if all i had to wear every day was this skirt i would be happy i love this skirt it is one of the most comfortable things that i own i've made five or six versions of it already and every time i've just been able to alter it like a tiny bit to just make it the perfect bottom for me like i can pair this with anything and i love it i can wear it with a crop top i can wear it with a shirt tucked in i just wear these all the time and i love them in every fabric in every length in every variation it's my favorite it's probably the pattern i've made the most and this summer i'm gonna make three more <laughs> Is it too much? I don't know. I feel, but these, the three versions of these, this I'm about to show you, I feel like will be some of my most worn garments once they're finished. And I cannot wait because somehow two of them feel like they're basics I should have had for years and I somehow didn't. And I'm very excited about them. This one is just going to be a lovely treat of a garment. It is more of the gingham soft wash linen from Blackbird Fabrics, but this color is Potter's Wheel. I mean, these are just my absolute favorite neutral browns, like these very warm pinky browns. Absolutely beautiful. This is going to be a beautiful skirt. I'm hoping I'll have enough left over to make like a little top to match it or something, um, but we will see. The Maeve skirt is similar um, to the Nini Kulats. It's the given measurements are up to a 38 and a half inch waist and a 46 and a half inch hip. However, it is, there's a ton of ease in the skirt because of the gathering and the waistband is fully elasticated. So I feel like there's a lot of flexibility in the sizing here. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for this version. I will probably batch cut these three skirts and um, they're all different colors. So I won't be able to sew them, like batch sew them, but I'm sure I will batch cut them since they're all using the same pattern. And the next one is actually gonna be made from the same lightweight denim that I'm gonna make the Anthea blouse with. So I'll be cutting out the Maeve skirt first because that is the main um, priority for this fabric. When I went to the fabric swap, I actually went in with the goal of finding denim for the Maeve skirt. That was like the only thing I was hoping I would really find. And I was so excited when I found this because there's a ton of fabric here, enough to make probably this skirt and the Anthea blouse and something else. Um, I feel like a Zadie jumpsuit would also be very cute in this, but we will see. So I'm really excited for this version. This feels like something I will wear all the time and I am very excited. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> okay, and the last move skirt I'm gonna make is in a different vein. Um, this is silk dotted, silky dotted viscose dobby, that's a mouthful from Blackbird Fabrics. It is black and it might be a little tricky to see the texture here. Um, let's see. But it has these shiny like slubs. There you go. It's a really nice, soft, drapey fabric. So I somehow don't have, sorry, make sure I'm gonna focus there. I somehow don't have a black Maeve skirt. Um, I did at one point have a black linen one, but I made the shorter version of the skirt and I just never wore it. I'm just much more comfortable in like a midi or maxi length skirt. So I donated that one to charity and I need a new one. So I'm gonna make this one. It's gonna be a little silkier, but I feel like I can like dress it up or dress it down and it'll just be nice to have like a plain black version. I do have a black ground printed version, but it's a little more out there. It has like caps on it and like <laughs> it's the um, garden printed floral like from Blackbird Fabrics that has all the flowers and the little caps if you know what I'm talking about. But that one's really fun, but it's not like a super versatile garment. So those are my three Maeve skirts. <laughs> all right. Uh, Next one is a rework. So I made this, um, more gingham, this Howland, oh, where's the front? Okay, this is the front. 
So I made this Helen dress, which is a Paradise Patterns um, pattern, which is beautiful, but it has this super open back. And as much as I love how it looks as a design, I'm not super comfortable wearing it. Um, some weird stuff also happened with the bust starts on mine th so that they're very pointy and I don't love that. And I don't know, I think I would just wear this more if it was just a skirt um, because it has this really fun ruffle on the bottom and it's very long. So my plan is to basically just like chop this at the waist and add an elastic waistband to turn it into a skirt. I'm not using a pattern or anything. I'm just kind of going to go for it. Um, and hopefully like whatever's left at the top, maybe I could combine with some other ganghams to make the collage gather top or, um, you know, I've just been, I've also just been saving up all my, uh, linen scraps to eventually make like a really amazing linen quilt, which I'm very excited about. So they might just go into that pile, but yeah, this dress is going to become a skirt and I think I'll just wear it much more often because I love this fabric and I want to be able to wear it and I just don't wear this dress that often um, and I don't ever feel like I can wear it to work so that also really limits the options for it. Next one is a carryover from spring. So like I was saying the plans are just aspirational. I can't remember, I don't think I've ever completed all of them in a season um, cause you know, my, what I want to work on changes throughout the three months of the season. So sometimes I get to the end of the season and I just was never inspired to work on a project or like, this is an example of one that I still want to make, but I just didn't get around to it. And maybe I'm not like hundred percent sure about the pattern. So I am planning to make the Jenra shirt dress version, um, which is a pattern by daughter Judy and I've not tried any of their patterns yet, but they are very interesting and cool. Um, it is available up to a 60 inch bust and a 66 inch hip. And I purchased this, um, white cotton Oxford shirting from core fabrics to make this with. It is very classic shirting fabric. It's fairly thick. Um, and I'm, I'm moving this one over to summer because I still like the idea of it. I really like the idea of having this like classic white button up, but it's a, a dress and then layering some of my like hand knit vests or sweaters over it. However, this fabric is not fully opaque. So I would have to wear like a slip or something under it. And I'm just a little bit nervous about how wearable this garment will actually be. So I'm now noodling, making like more of a cropped, like white button up shirt that would still look cute, like just peeking out a little bit under my sweaters and vests that are cropped, but not like a full length shirt. I don't know, but I have a lot of this. I think I have like three yards of it. So if I do end up just making a button up shirt, I'm going to have a ton of fabric left over, which isn't the end of the world, but, um, I'm still kind of noodling on this one. And honestly, this one might even get pushed into fall, which is when I'd be wearing more anyway. Um, but I'm keeping it on the board just to keep it fresh in my mind and keep kind of thinking about like, what does this fabric want to be? And what is the piece that I would really wear? Um, so yeah, still working on working through that, but the tentative plan, my fabric pile is falling over. The tentative plan is to make the Jenra shirt dress. All right, three more, bear with me. Uh, the next one is really fun and exciting. Um, so I saw a ready to wear dress. It is from a small designer. Um, you know, it's not like a big company. It's like an indie designer. And it had this amazing like quilt print on it, this like black and cream quilt print. Um, but the style of the dress, it was only available in one style and it was like a little short baby doll dress and that's just not something that would work for me. So I decided to see if I could recreate the fabric just for myself. You know, I'm not, this is not available for purchase or anything, it's just for me. Um, and so I did. And I used spoon flour to do that. So I made the design um, in Adobe Illustrator and 
then I ordered some samples, um, some like sample yardage on a couple different fabrics because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to choose. So the first one I got was the cotton poplin. And here is that swatch. It's, it has a really nice crisp drape, but it is quite see-through. And I knew I wanted a white or light ground and that this was not gonna be suitable for a dress, even with a gathered skirt. Um, so it kind of ruled that out. And I did initially sample it in black and white. So you can see it's this cool like sawtooth star design. Or not sawtooth star, is that sawtooth? No, this is the, I can't remember if this, yeah, this is the sawtooth. Sorry, it's very similar to the Ohio star, which is another classic block that I like. And the other one that I sampled it on was the organic cotton knit. And this one I love. So this is the one I went with. It has, it's quite heavy. It has a really nice drape. It's probably not a hundred percent see-through with it still being, or, you know, not see-through with it being on a light ground, but it's much heavier. And I think with the skirt being gathered, like it's going to be just fine. So yeah, um, the samples turned out great. I love the scale of the print. Um, so I decided to go ahead and order it. So I did make one tweak to the color. When I got these in, um, just black and white, I felt like that was a little bit cold and a little bit stark. So I decided to go with a kind of creamy base instead. Um, and the one thing I will say too, with the Spoonflower prints, because they're all digital prints, um, and if you're not familiar, Spoonflower is a company where you can upload your own designs and print them on any of their fabrics, or you can um, shop from their marketplace of designs um, that are available. It's really cool. I actually got to tour their facility when I was in college in North Carolina, and it's pretty impressive. Um, if you're interested, definitely check them out. I'll link them below. Um, but they only, it's only printed on one side, and it is a pigment print, which means it's, you know, it's uh, just sitting on the top. It's like digitally printed pigment. So the black, like really dark colors are not super saturated. And if you ever do like a darker black ground, like that's about as dark as you can get. Like it's definitely not a true black. It's as dark as they can get it, but it is not like a super black black. And that's just something to know. Um, the digital printers are definitely better with um, brighter and softer colors than they are with like really, really dark colors. But let me show you the final fabric that I got because I love it. Mm. So I got three yards of the organic cotton knit printed and I did, I went with this ground color, um, which is uh, a color I'm just familiar with through work. We use Pantone, I, I am a professional fashion designer and we use Pantone colors and this is soft muslin, which is just one of my favorite um, neutrals that we use. And I also love that it's like, you know, muslin, that's something we use when we're sewing. So it just felt right. And it's this really soft pinky cream color. And let me show you my sketch of what I'm planning to make with this. It's loosely gonna be based off of another ready to wear dress that I have, but it's basically just an oversized t-shirt dress with a gathered skirt. So this is the silhouette. It's very simple. Um, I figured I would keep the silhouette very simple because the pattern is gonna be loud and proud. So I am extremely excited to make that. I'm debating if I wanna make a muslin or not. Um, just, I mean, this fabric was not super expensive, but it feels special. So I don't want to, um, you know, run the risk of cutting right into it and then not loving the fit of the garment. So I might end up getting some cheaper, like knit fabric from Joann's or something to make a muslin first, or maybe I'll just be brave and cut into it. We will see. Okay, next one is the Orchard Dress by Helen's Closet. This is available up to a 60 inch bust and a 62 inch hip. This is a free pattern if you subscribe to Helen's newsletter. And it's a good one. I've already made two of these and I really like them. It's a super quick and easy sew and it's very satisfying and it's very versatile. So I 
want a navy version because I just know I will be able to throw that on in the summer on its own. In the winter, I'll be able to layer like a sweater over it and I'm really excited. So I actually cut it out already, um, but I am using a navy Brussels washer linen from my local fabric store, so to speak. Not a big, super exciting piece, but one that I'm sure I will wear all the time. And, you know, I feel like it's good to have a mix of like fun experimental pieces and ones that, you know, you're just are going to be like workhorses for you. And I do try to like balance that out. Okay, last one. Thank you for bearing with me. So this is going to be a hack of the orchard dress. Let me show you again my sketch. And this is kind of inspired by a couple different um, like runway and ready to wear images that I've seen. Um, but this is just going to be my hack on the orchard dress. So this is the plain orchard dress, um, which I'm sure I put a picture in, but just so you can see, that's the sketch. And then this is the hack version that I want to do. So I'm going to add a little key bias mount keyhole opening with ties at the neck, a little bit more of a V neck, and then I'm going to add a ruffle on the bottom. And as you already saw the little chip there, it's more gingham. <laughs> this is another stone washed linen gingham from Blackbird Fabrics. And look at this color, you guys. This is my favorite one. It's called London Fog. And I love a London Fog. If you're not sure, if you're not familiar, that is a, an Earl Grey latte. And it's just one of my favorite drinks. And it's this beautiful bluish purplish periwinkle color on this like soft cream background and I just think this is going to be a beautiful dress and I'm very excited to work on it um yeah I don't know that one I'm like really excited about that one that might be one of the first I feel like the first ones I do will probably be like the Maeve skirts and the kneading culottes because they're so fast and easy for me because I've made them so many times um and then I will probably dive into like this one and some of the more um, some of the ones that will require a little bit more pattern making or, uh, pattern, you know, adjustments. Um, but that is it. Those are my summer sewing plans. It's quite hefty this year. <laughs> we'll see if I get to all of them or not. I think there's like 13 or 14 different patterns. Um, but then, you know, some of them I have multiple versions planned. So we will see, um, if you're interested in seeing the finished objects and following along with the rest of my making, please do tune in to the regular podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please do like, and subscribe. It really helps to grow the channel and the community that we're building here. Um, I would love it if you leave me a comment, let me know if you're also obsessed with gingham what you're working on, if you're sewing anything or what you're planning to sew for the summer. I love to read your comments, um, but that is going to do it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back with another fall sewing plans video in a couple of months. See you next time. Bye.